fractures are a common presenting complaint and need to be managed appropriately in order to prevent possible complications. Should any complications arise, it is important to identify them early and ensure adequate management. Acute compartment syndrome is a complication that may cause great mobility in patients and should therefore be recognized and managed early. Patients should also be made aware of the signs and symptoms in order to recognize them. In this video, we will be talking about acute compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome is a syndrome which occurs when increased pressure within a closed osteofascial compartment compromises the circulation of the tissues within that space. We'll start by looking at the anatomy of the limbs. The muscle groups of the limbs are divided into compartments, which are ensheathed in fascial membranes. The fascial membrane is strong and unyielding, creating a fixed space in which the muscle resides. Factors affecting perfusion to a compartment. In order for a compartment to be perfused, the perfusion pressure of the area needs to exceed the pressure within the compartment. The perfusion pressure is the difference between the arterial pressure supplying the compartment and the venous pressure draining the compartment. This means that Blood flow to the compartment can be affected by arterial and venous pressures as well as the pressures within the compartment. In compartment syndrome, the perfusion pressure is too low and circulation within the compartment is compromised. This is caused by an increase in the pressure within the compartment until it exceeds the perfusion pressure. The perfusion pressure is therefore no longer great enough to adequately perfuse the compartment, resulting in subsequent ischemia of the limb. If left untreated, circulation is further compromised and necrosis ensues. Etiology. An increase in compartment pressure is caused by both intrinsic and extrinsic factors. The extrinsic factors are tight casts and dressings as well as tight closure of fascial defects. The intrinsic factors are bleeding and edema due to fractures, crash injuries and post ischemic swelling. Symptoms. The earliest sign patients should look out for is pain, which is persistent and out of proportion to the apparent injury. They may also experience paresthesia, which is a tingling sensation in the affected limb. When examining a patient with suspected compartment syndrome, these are some of the signs which can be elicited. Pain with passive stretch of muscles in the affected compartment is an early finding. This can be elicited by stretching the big toe. Diminished sensation, muscle weakness, tense compartment with a firm wood-like feeling, pallor from vascular insufficiency, and paralysis. A useful way to remember the signs and symptoms of compartment syndrome is to remember the six Ps. Pain, paresthesia, paralysis, pallor, pulselessness, polar, which is a cold limb. Remember that pain is the main symptom as a splintered limb should not be particularly painful and should also improve with time. Worsening pain is always a red flag and should alert you to compartment syndrome. The other signs are late signs. The diagnosis of compartment syndrome can be made clinically. However, Intracompartmental pressure monitoring can be used in high-risk patients who are not able to communicate reliably, for example, unconscious patients, intoxicated patients, and infants. Management. Threatened compartments should be immediately decompressed. Casts, bandages, and dressings must be completely removed. The limb should be kept flat as elevating the limb causes a further decrease in end capillary pressure and worsens the muscle ischemia. If there is no change within 10 to 15 minutes, an open fasciotomy should be performed. The wounds should be left open and inspected two days later. It is important to prevent the development of compartment syndrome. This can be done by applying plaster of Paris correctly, 
post reduction management, and patient education. It is essential for medical practitioners to apply POP correctly. Some important aspects include ensuring the fracture is reduced correctly, adequate padding, and to make sure that the POP is not applied too tightly. Post reduction and fixation management. Do a circulation check within the first 24 hours and check the neurovascular status of the limb. If there are any concerns, split the, the plaster as well as the underlying padding down to the skin. Patients should be advised to return immediately if they experience excessive or increasing pain, tingling or pins and needles, swelling of fingers or toes, pale red or blue fingers or toes. We hope you enjoyed watching this video and now have a better understanding of compartment syndrome. Thank you.